Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the next installment in the Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight webinar series. Uh, my name is Paul. I'm uh, here today to host and to uh, guide you through our interesting session on how to read candlestick charts for beginners. Um, this session will be, as the uh, title implies, aimed more towards beginners, those of you who are very new to trading. But as always, there's something to be picked up or to be reminded of. And uh, as always, I appreciate that you know we have a, a wide range of people who join us for our sessions from com from complete beginners to to sort of uh, experienced traders. And uh, you know we thank you for joining us. And if you're watching this on uh, demand on the YouTube channel, then uh, fantastic. You know, please if you find it useful, give us a like. If uh, join the session. Uh, you know you have any questions either put them in the chat box put them in the comments box okay we'd uh, always fascinated by the engagement very happy to uh, answer your questions and if you have maybe even suggestions for uh, future topics we're very very happy to uh, to take that on board um, we appreciate that it's been a uh, rather uh, interesting year shall we say ladies and gentlemen we appreciate that there's been a fair degree of volatility uncertainty but we appreciate you taking the time to come and join us uh, here today for today's session to help you in your uh, own trading journey and if you stick with us till the end uh, you'll find that what we'll do is i'll switch across to live charts and actually talk about the uh, what we've discussed on the uh, slides because i appreciate it always helps when you can see it being applied in the uh, sort of in real life markets so uh, what are we going to talk about today well you know as the name implies we're going to talk about you know candlesticks and really we're going to look at what's important for beginners to know about candlestick charts and you know really what i want to do is try and help you uh, if you're a beginner trader how to interpret candlesticks okay how to uh, understand what they're actually telling us and how you can use them in your own decision making processes uh, and what we'll do is we'll have a little look at a few important candlestick formations as well okay that's what we will uh, take a look at there's a few sort of uh, major ones very simple ones that you can take away and you can actually start to utilize today in your own uh, trading if you're a complete uh, and utter beginner uh, uh, for me, well, you know, uh, I've traded for many years, okay, uh, primarily I look to trade FX indices and commodities, uh, primarily I like to trade trends, okay, for longer term positions, uh, and I like to be a reversal and mean reversion trader on uh, intraday trading. And today, well, you know, with the Admiral Markets, and as you can see, they provide a wide range of uh, financial instruments for you to uh, be able to, to trade with uh, real sort of uh, global expertise with local support. They're uh, licensed and uh, regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most uh, popular trading products uh, and allowing you to engage with markets using both MT4 and MT5. So if you have any questions about Admiral Markets, please get in touch with your account representative uh, and they'll be very happy happy to help you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are to chat about how to read candlestick charts for beginners. So it, it's easy for beginner traders to be intimidated by the amount of knowledge required to be able to analyze markets. However, with some education and understanding of how candlesticks are formed and what they tell us, then it becomes easier to analyze and understand markets. Uh, so in this session, we'll discuss how a beginner can understand candlestick charts uh, and where they fit into the scope of trading financial markets. Uh, and it is very true that sometimes beginner traders, you know, it's, it's easy to become intimidated because actually there's, a, there's an absolute wealth of information that you can tap into and it's a very easy to uh, be overwhelmed by just an absolute deluge of information. So sometimes beginners are left just a little bit kind of paralyzed because they're just not really sure where to turn. But what we uh, want to do with this particular session is just just focus on helping you understand some sort of simple ideas and concepts around candlestick charts so that you have a very simple starting point by which to uh, a analyze uh, markets and then actually look at how to make particular trading decisions uh, and if you look at uh, you know go through the whole trading spotlight webinar series you'll see that there is actually a wide range of sort of concepts themes ideas okay and sessions that are all about you know where you go from once you understand you know just even sort of simple basics of candlestick charts where you can take it in terms of more advanced types of analysis more advanced types of, uh, of trading setups and uh, and patterns so you know if you're able to sort of uh, uh, you know understand this particular session if you're able to use this as a starting point well then there is once again there's you know plenty of resources here on the uh, trading spotlight webinar series that you can utilize to help you with your own uh, sort of trading journey 
So, you know, as I said, the, the sort of clue is in the name is that we're, we're going to be aiming at beginners today, okay? Complete beginners and trying to, to help them just make sense of what, as I said, can be sometimes a bit, you know, uh, sort of uh, uh, intimidating and overwhelming. But, you know, <clears throat> the reality is the vast majority of private traders, private retail traders, you know, they are making their uh, decisions using technical analysis. So, you know, you're going to be looking at a chart uh, and really at its most simple basic idea. Well, when you think about what a, is a chart, well, you know, a, a chart is just a representation over of price over time. And as it says there, chart will show you the various prices at which an instrument has been traded over a period of time. And I'm sure you actually all, you know, have seen that. I'm sure you will have seen a chart and you'll have looked at it but it's more about well actually what is it telling me how do i start to interpret the information on that you know uh, in order to be able to make better sort of uh, decisions for my uh, for my trading you know what i uh, talk about you know to uh, to sort of new traders is uh, is to think about it almost you know when you're looking at a price chart you know it's almost like looking at a sheet of music um for those of you who may have sort of learned music whilst you know in, in younger at school etc you know when you first look at a sheet of music it, it just looks like an awful lot of squiggles and lines on a uh, on a piece of paper it doesn't really make much sense but as you start to identify and understand the sort of you know the individual elements those individual musical notes well then you know with time and a bit of experience and practice you're able to sort of start to put together what is just squiggles and lines on a piece of paper into a sheet of music and create something beautiful from it uh, and i think it's the same very much with trading is okay is when you first look at a chart you might look at a load of squiggly lines okay on a chart that just completely confuses you but as you start to identify and understand and learn about the individual elements that go up to make that chart well then you're in a position to sort of turn that sort of a kind of like squiggly lines into a piece of beauty uh you know a thing of beauty for yourself as well in terms of being able to sort of uh, um, analyze markets and make trading decisions so if we have a little look very much firstly at you know the types of charts that are available and how we get to to where we're uh, our main thrust is for today well, very often, you know, when you sort of look at a chart to begin with as a trader, you are quite often represented, you know, price is represented by here like a line chart. OK, and, you know, as, the, as it says there, it's just a simple line chart draws a line from one closing price to the next closing price. And when strung together with the line, you can see the general price movement of a currency pair over time. So, uh, for example, that's just a, a line chart of the euro against the US dollar. <clears throat> okay, it doesn't really tell us a massive amount there, okay, but very often people use that as the most simple representation for uh, price over time. But realistically, as traders, you know, we want more data, okay, we want more data to be able to have a deeper understanding of that market. And so, you know, very few traders will actually trade off line charts, most of us will move on to sort of utilizing different types of charts. The next one of that could be is that you'll find very often traders will use bar charts okay and as it says a bar chart is a little more complex it shows the opening and closing prices as well as the highs and lows the bottom of the vertical bar indicates the lowest traded price for that time period while the top of the bar indicates the highest price paid the vertical bar itself indicates the currency pair or instruments trading range as a whole the horizontal hash on the left side of the bar is the opening price and the right side horizontal hash is the closing price and here is an example there of the uh, the euro against the dollar but what really i think is more important okay about bar charts is that it starts to give you uh, insight deeper insight into what's going on sort of underlying the uh, the actual price and we start to sort of come across these four bits of data which will start to rule your life as a trader the ohlc the open the high the low and the close Okay, all traders want to know what the uh, OHLC okay is for that particular period. You know whether you're trade looking at a, a one minute bar or a monthly bar, okay, because that gives us great amounts of information, and we can start to understand what's actually going on within the market. We start to get a little bit of a deeper insight, okay, into what's actually going on. And in this particular case, let's just let's just use the old drawing tools here what we can see is that as i said the left horizontal hash is where we opened okay we opened here at the start of the day at some point okay we traded lower than the open but we can see that the sort of bulls came stepped in 
pushed all the way uh, up and higher, uh, and then we actually closed just off the highs of the day. So uh, as always, I, uh, I tell you, I'm a, I'm a better trader than I am an artist, so I, uh, I forgive my uh, drawing tools there, but hopefully you get the gist and the understanding, okay? It's, uh, by being able to recognize and understand that OHLC and the relationship between those four, uh, four bits of data, well, then you start to get a better and deeper understanding of on what is actually going on underneath the, uh, in the underlying sort of momentum and movement and uh, 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 sort of current of the charts. Uh, and then we can move on to, to looking at our, what we're going to focus on today, candlestick charts, okay? So some of you will have seen candlestick charts, but I also appreciate some of the people joining us today you know, are complete and uh, absolute utter beginners. So when we see candlestick charts, well, you know, they're normally represented, normally a sort of kind of green and red candles you'll see on the chart. Uh, and what we can see there is uh, normally is that a, a green bar would be identified as a buyer bar. And why? Because the price closed higher, higher than it opened on this bar. So effectively, prices went up on that day or on that particular session. Uh, and alternatively, what we'll see is, you know, a red bar, a seller bar is that price closed lower than it opened on this particular uh, on this particular candlestick, and therefore prices went down. But it's still the same sort of information. We're still looking at the OHLC, the open, the high, the low, and the close. However, what we get is invariably we get a body, okay? So between the uh, opening price and closing price, we have a body drawn, which you can see there. And so that kind of gives us a, you know, it, it's sort of more of a visual insight as to what's going on in that market. And we will dig into that in a few slides time. If you're understanding why they're called candlestick charts, well, you know, th this came from about, I think it might've been about 700 years ago from uh, Japan and from actual, from rice traders, okay, who would use this information to actually reflect the price of rice as it went through their uh, commodities markets many, many years ago. Uh, and invariably what's happened is that over the last, uh, actually over the last sort of maybe uh, 30 years or so, they have become more prevalent within what we'd maybe call Western sort of trading concepts and ideas to the extent that now what you'll find is that you know most charts when you'll open them are actually representing as uh, as candlestick charts so you know this is uh, yeah this is a chart of uh, gold okay and this is a monthly chart and you know as i say you know we're, we're here looking at you know through the eyes of a complete beginner you know we can start to see information there's just a you know a series of green and red candlesticks okay some of you might be able to identify that there are you know that there are some uh, kind of quite clear uh, quite clear trends here okay that we've seen on that on the monthly chart but you know what we can say is that you know as you start to understand okay the candlestick chart start to understand one or two of uh, just the very simplest of the setups the very simplest of particular candlesticks it allows you to give you a an idea about you know where the market may move in its next session and that can provide you with a slight edge and that's actually where we're looking to start with, okay? Being able to find ideas and concepts that we can understand, that we can utilize to help us a build a, a slight edge for ourselves in our, own, uh, in our own trading. So, you know, some people will look at that chart, as I say, and be able to kind of read it and understand it and actually identify particular points where they're relevant, where there might have been reversals or where indications that uh, trends were going to continue. But I also recognize that some people would be looking at that still as complete beginners and saying, well, you know, that's all very nice, Paul, but it's still just a lot of green and red uh, sort of lines on a, uh, on, a, on a chart. But, you know, that's okay. Bear with us because we're going to go into this in a little bit more depth for the rest of our session and just have a, an idea of, uh, you, know, what, um, you know, how to identify some particular little setups and what we're actually particularly looking for when we're, uh, when we're working with candlesticks. So... What we need to understand is, as a beginner is, you know, what can help us is, you know, how to read those candlesticks. So in this picture here, okay, on the, on the right side of the, uh, of the slide, we see what's known as a classic candlestick pattern called a hammer. 
okay now for the moment what you know i'm not really that interested in what the name of it is we don't need to you know, label these things however you want but what is important okay is to actually be able to read okay be able to read this individual candlestick okay so you have to think about when you look at a candlestick well what happened to cause this all right and let's just get the old drawing tools up here what we had here okay is the candle opal then at some point sellers stepped in and took control of the price during this session let's just say this is a daily candle okay during that day many traders were shorting this chart thinking it was headed lower however as it got down to a low point here okay which could be anywhere and for any reason what we find is that buyers started to step in and they took control of the market they forced all those short sellers to cover their positions and the price had enough strength there was enough buyers to basically drive the price higher and in fact actually we went past where we opened and we closed right on the high of the day so what we want to understand is you know is a case of well who is in control of the market at that moment this is the kind of simple element that where we want to look at you know when we've had like there where we've had a close higher than the open okay where we've had a you know what has clearly been the bulls stepping in and taking control what we're trying to understand and recognize is well who is in control of this market okay that's the first question very simple question we can ask ourselves based on how that candlestick closes all right who is in control of this market right so in this particular case okay you know we can look at that and say well you know based upon that it's clear that the buyers took control and the, when that candle closed, the buyers were in control of the market. Okay. So that gives us a slight, you know, a slight edge in understanding of possible directional bias for the next session or the next day, or, you know, whatever, whatever time frame you're looking at uh, trading this particular, uh, um, particular candle. So what we're interested in is for a beginner trader, it, very simply okay is understanding who's in control all right and here's a little uh, test for us which we can go through normally we'd be able to to do this uh, very simply but you know what we'll look at is who wins the battle all right who is when this candle is completed who is in control of that uh, who is in control of that market okay is it the, the buyers or is it the sellers so if we look at here okay the the sort of uh, the top far left candlestick as that's closed you have to ask yourself the question well who wins that battle is it the buyer or the seller well what we have is the buyers okay just look at that price opened here but it actually closed higher than it opened remember if price closes higher than it opens that means the buyers are in control it's a bullish candle equally okay as we can see in the second candle here is that if the candles close okay lower than we opened well then the candle is normally printed as a, a red candle so when that happens well of course we have the sellers in control and if we go through these we can see that you know the next candle well you know who wins that battle is it the buyers or is it the sellers what we see is it's the sellers okay we have basically closed lower than we opened and on the second candle afterwards, even though it's kind of the same sort of kind of same shape that you might see, which we'll touch on later, what we have here is that, you know, we've actually closed higher than we opened. So actually the buyers are in control. But as you get a little bit of experience and a little bit of knowledge and education, you'll start to recognize, okay, the relationship between those four bits of uh, data and also start to look at it as part of the context of a bigger picture. But today here to start for, for beginners, when you just look at a candle, just first question you want to understand is, you know, who's in control of this market, okay? Is it the buyers or the sellers? And we can see the next candle here, okay? It's a very strong seller, okay? Strong sort of bearish candle because, you know, invariably we've closed lower than we opened. The next candle, we close higher than we opened. So who's in control? Well, it's the buyers. And across to the bottom left, well, you know, who's in control of the uh, bottom left candle when that closes? Well, that's going to be the buyer. Similarly, the next one, it'll be the seller because we've closed lower than we opened. The next candle, well, we've actually got it's a buyers okay remember we've closed higher than we've opened the next one is the seller because even though it looks the same okay we've actually closed lower than we opened 
The next candle here is a seller candle, even though they sort of the heart of the open and the close are very close together. And actually what we see on the last one, well, that, that's actually a draw. That's a draw where we've seen is actually the closing price is the same as the opening price. Uh, and people will label that some things like, you know, a, a doji candle, a high wave candle, spinning top, et cetera, depending upon it. But as I said, at the moment, we're not too fussed about the labels. What we just want to understand is who is in control. That's the element, okay? Who is in control? So, just to repeat, okay, uh, candlesticks are easier to interpret, certainly than sort of kind of line charts and bar charts. They are easy to use because candlesticks also provide you with psychological insight, which we will touch upon in a few slides time. And candlesticks are good at identifying possible market turning points. And this is very important, okay, and I just want you to take this uh, point on board. Uh, candlesticks, okay, if you're going to use them alone, candlesticks generally, are a reversal indicator, okay? So the key thing to understand that is that there has to be something to reverse. You need to have them, they work at their best, candlesticks, when they are at the ends of trends, okay? They're because they're a reversal indicator, so there needs to be something to reverse. When you see lots of candlesticks in the sort of the middle of a, uh, in the middle of a kind of period of consolidation, their use, okay, or their efficiency, okay, is, is diminished considerably. They work better when we actually see kind of, uh, um, when they start to print at the ends of particular trends. So if we looked at that, and just to quickly recap, when we looked at line charts, they're very basic, okay? When you switch on your Bloomberg terminal, okay, and you'll see in the background, the guy pulls up the, uh, the, the chart of an instrument, it's normally a line chart because it's just giving you a very simple visual interpretation, but it doesn't actually help traders a great deal. A bar chart gives us more information, is more useful because it starts to give us OHLC, open, high, low, close, okay? And if there's, you know, one thing you want to take away from here is start to understand and recognize the importance of OHLC. And then finally, candlestick charts. Well, you know, candlestick charts are useful because they give us psychological insight because by being able to learn to recognize and understand the sort of difference in the kind of how the uh, the, the candlestick charts are printed the, the actual um, the relationship between the OHLC that helps traders give us a little bit of psychological insight so with that in mind let's have a little look at some popular candlestick themselves and they can start to give us help and a bit of use uh, usefulness in terms of being able to help us analyze a market and how we can utilize that in our own trading decisions so <clears throat> One of the very simplest and easiest of candlestick patterns that uh, that traders can use is something called an inside bar. So uh, an inside bar is formed when the high and the low of the bar is fully within the range of the preceding bar. So sometimes you'll find that the preceding bar is sometimes referred to as a mother bar or a kangaroo bar. Uh, what I like to say to people is that, you know, Markets are a representation of human beings. They're all organisms. And like any organism, okay, especially like human beings, you know, we, we surge, then we rest, then we surge again. And an inside bar is where the market is resting, where it's had a bit of a surge, the market is resting, and it's getting ready to make its next surge. And so as traders, we are looking at where could we catch the next possible surge. So let's get up the old drawing tool. So, you know, as I said there, what is important is to recognize is this candlestick here, okay, the high and the low of this candlestick are within, okay, they are within the range of the candle before, okay? So this one might be called the mother bar or the kangaroo bar, okay, depending upon uh, your own uh, particular definitions. But as I said, the, the label isn't necessarily the most important bit here for beginners what it is is to understand the relationship okay think about that remember we're talking about these candlesticks using them to help give us a little bit of psychological insight think about that what the market has surged now it's taking a rest and what we're looking to do is well can we catch the next surge can we position ourselves to actually trade the next surge So here's some examples of inside bars. So let's get the old drawing tool here. And you know, the important thing is, as we can say, okay, 
the high and the low are within within the range of the bar before and you know and, and regardless of how that candle that inside bar candle closes and completes the important thing is is that the high and the low of it are within the range of the bar but what we can see here okay this one i would not call this an inside bar myself now this kind of leads on to a sort of a kind of a, a conversation or a debate but the way I interpret candlesticks and the way I interpret inside bars is that in this case, the high of the ins of this particular bar is gone outside, is traded outside the range, okay, outside of the high of the bar beforehand. Now, some traders, some traders, okay, will actually just make their uh, make their definitions, okay, or make their decisions off the body of the candlestick chart, okay. So they may look at me and say, well, Paul, you know, the actual sort of kind of open and close were within the range. I think that's an inside bar, but I would disagree. Okay. My view is that you know, if price is traded up here, then price is traded up there and that's, that's a valid place. And so it actually breaks out the range of the bar proceeding. So that, that is actually not an inside bar, all right? The inside bar has to be the range. Okay. Is within uh, the range of the preceding bar. Okay. The high and the low within the range of the uh, preceding bar. And that is uh, crucially important. So the, uh, the next simple candlestick that we can uh, take away to, to look at is what's often called the, the outside bar. Okay. Or sometimes the engulfing bar. Uh, and uh, as you can probably imagine, you can probably guess already if we've just looked at inside bars, well, you can probably have an indication or you probably guess what an outside bar is. And really an outside bar is formed when the high and the low of the bar fully engulf the range of the preceding bar. It must include the complete engulfment of the entire range of the previous bar, not just the body. All right, okay, just remember what I was saying there before about the uh, uh, inside bar is that sometimes basically people will sort of just uh, go off the actual body of the uh, of the candle. Whereas uh, I'm saying nope, that's that's not that's not true. It's a case of you know the the kind of the high and the low has to you know completely engulf the range of the uh, of the, the bar beforehand the preceding bar what i will say about uh, the outside bar okay is is they happen infrequently okay they don't happen as often as people would like but when they happen okay they can be a very strong signal now just remember what i said a few slides back remember that as a general rule candlestick charts are reversal patterns okay they are reversal patterns in themselves so you need to have a trend to reverse so you know if uh, if i saw you know just to draw if you know if i saw price had been coming up here okay uh, and then we actually saw this which is you know a, a kind of a bearish outside bar because remember what's happened here is we've opened here and we've closed down here well then invariably what you'd have is a bit of an idea that we might have a directional bias to the downside remember it's you know a candlestick pattern is a reversal pattern uh, equally here this is a, a bullish okay this is a bullish engulfing uh, candle or outside bar uh, and what we expect to see this is you know after price has been trading its way uh, down well then then we have a bullish outside bar and what we'd be having an idea is that well you know we've likely got a bit of a uh, a directional bias for the next session or two to the upside okay remember we want to see them as reversal patterns. So they need to be at the end of a trend. They need to be at the end of something to reverse. So, you know, these are uh, more examples of outside bars. Let's just draw them in. As you can see, you know, they, they complete range completely engulfs the preceding bar. And that's what we're looking to see there. Okay. We like to see, you know, really strong, solid uh, outside bars. That's, uh, as I said, when we see them at the end of ranges, that's actually will actually provide us with some uh, fantastically useful information in terms of uh, being able to sort of identify the directional bias for the, uh, uh, for the next, um, for the next session or two. The next uh, candlestick that I'd like you to, uh, to take a look at is what's quite often called a pin bar or a rejection candle, or it actually has quite a few other names, okay? It's a very, very popular trading trigger. 
often called, as I said, a pin bar. Sometimes it'll be called a high test or a low test bar. Sometimes it's called a rejection candle. Other times it's called a hammer or a shooting star. As I said, once again, to begin with, it's not the label that is, uh, is really what we're uh, uh, sort of, you know, hammering home, so to speak, pardon the pun, but what it is, is, is you being able to identify and recognize, okay, the actual candlestick in terms of, you know, what it's, uh, what it's demonstrating, what it's showing and where it's giving us an indication of where the sort of uh, the, the next session's directional bias may be. So it is a very popular uh, trading trigger and it's actually seen across all charts, all instruments, all time frames. But what is important for us to see is, and let's just draw, is that you know, a good pin bar, which we're going to call them here, okay, is that the open and the close should be within the previous bar, the range of the previous bar, which we'll look at in a moment. What we're looking to see is that the wick, okay, the candle wick here should be two to three times the length of the body. What we'd also be expecting is, you know, is the kind of a, yeah, a long nose protruding from all the other bars. Uh, and good pin bars, they stick out and are very obvious. One of the reasons that these are called pin bars are after the sort of uh, the Disney character, okay, Pinocchio. You maybe remember that from your uh, childhood, who's the little uh, wooden puppet. And every time he told some lies, his nose got longer. Well, you know, what we're looking at here is that, you know, the pin bar is in many ways is kind of like uh, is Pinocchio in that, you know, in this particular case, you know, we've probably had a price moving down. People might see that the uh, the wick is pointing down. So they might actually be expecting price to continue down. But the reality is, okay, is that it's more likely to actually, as I say, be a reversal pattern and price actually reverses and moves upwards. And so that's why, you know, it's pin bar. It's, it's kind of almost lying in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of the direction that it's saying that the price is likely to be, to be heading to moving. But as always, remember, as a candlestick pattern, they are generally reversal patterns, and that's what uh, that's what becomes useful and interesting to us. All right, but as I said, should have a good uh, good sized wick, two to three times the length of the body, a good long nose protruding from all the other sort of candlesticks, and those good pin bars. They stick out, and, and they are very they're very obvious. They should leap off the chart at you. So uh, we've got some examples here of uh, pin bars. Okay, remember what I was just saying is that is that they are reversal patterns. So in this particular case, when we have the wick pointing down, well, what we'd be expecting is, you know, when we see price has been trading down, you know, the nose is pointing down, uh, and what we'd be expecting is the directional bias to to effectively to be to the to the upside to the bullish side. And on the flip side, when we see you know kind of wicks pointing up after. OK, after price has been, you know, moving its way upwards, well, then we'd be expecting price. The, the likelihood is that price is likely to roll over and fall away for the next session or so. So, you know, as I said, they, they are quite obvious and they, you know, they, they show up across all instruments and all time frames. But, you know, what you'll find, what we'll look at in the moment on the live charts is recognizing that, it's actually, you know, the sort of the, the higher the time frame, the more validity any particular candlestick chart has. OK, a one minute pin bar does not have the, uh, the same value as a, as a monthly pin bar, which we'll look at uh, in a particular moment. So uh, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, uh, price charts give us an indication of how price has developed over time. And whilst you can use line and bar charts, it, candlesticks are much more useful. They provide psychological insight into the state of the market. But it's important to remember that candlestick patterns are reversal patterns. As you learn each candlestick, you'll be able to combine them to create trade setups. And that is actually very clue, clear, okay? And that you've, uh, if you've seen me on the other Trading Spotlight webinars, what you'll hear me talk about is I'm always talking about a confluence of events, a confluence of indicators, okay? Uh, I personally, I like to see sort of, you know, three things come together at, uh, at a particular time and place, and we'll look at that on the live charts in a moment. As always, we ensure that we use good risk management practices when we look to trade them. Uh, and we'll have a look at them in the live markets for our uh, for our last few uh, five ten minutes. So 
um, for those of you who'd like more support, we appreciate that, you know, especially if you're uh, trading from home, it can be a, a bit of a lonesome endeavor. Well, you can join the exclusive trading spotlight community on uh, tradersyard.com. You'll find that um, myself and my colleagues, Marcus and uh, Jens, they're uh, printing some uh, great stuff, great useful uh, uh, information on there. Okay, some superb resources for you to tap into. And um, I'll be on there for the rest of the afternoon. You can happy to come in there and answer your questions. Uh, and it's very easy to join us, okay? You're at tradersyard.com forward slash group forward slash 312. I look forward to joining me there. Also, also, don't forget to join us uh, next time, okay, on uh, when we same time on Wednesday, join my colleague Marcus to learn about how to use diversification in your trading, including you know, what is diversification, diversification in time frames, how to use diversification properly. And that will be on at two o'clock London time on Wednesday, the 23rd of September. So check your inbox for the webinar link, or you can uh, head over to the AdmiralMarkets.com uh, website to, uh, to basically to sign up there, or you can uh, look at it on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, and what you'll find is that if you look at the AdmiralMarkets.com website, you'll find you know, a huge amount of analysis and education and uh, resources that you can tap into. And you can also contact us if you've got questions, if you're watching this you know, later and you've got particular questions about uh, either this session or other elements we've covered in Trading Spotlight, you can contact us at uh, email at global at admiralmarkets.com or you can watch this and uh, all of the Trading Spotlight webinars on youtube.com forward slash admiralmarkets uh, or look at facebook.com forward slash admiralmarketsglobal. So um, I hope you found that uh, useful. As I said, it's, it's very much aimed at complete uh, beginners, complete not to beginners to, uh, to trading and uh, candlesticks. And, uh, you know, it's a starting point. You have to remember, we all had to start somewhere, ladies and gentlemen. But if you uh, will bear with us, what we'll do is we'll switch across the live charts. We've got about five minutes or so left. We'll switch across to the live charts and we'll have a little look at that. And we'll just have a look at one or two candlestick charts that are setting up. And, you know, we can talk about how they uh, how they played out and what they're representing and showing us as, uh, as traders. So if you'll bear with us one moment, we'll switch across now. Okay, so hopefully you can uh, now sort of uh, still hear me, still see me. Uh, hopefully you can actually sort of uh, um, see the Admiral Market MT4 chart platform here. So um, uh, what we're looking at here is this is just a simple MetaTrader profile on based on indices. And uh, I said sort of just halfway through the session about how the thing about candlesticks is the higher the time frame, the more validity that they that they actually have. So you know a a one minute you know a one minute you know a, a outside bar is not going to be as strong as a monthly uh, outside bar. Uh, and if we just look at here, you know this is I'm just going to have a very quick look at the uh, the Dow Jones here. So this is the Dow Jones, and this is the monthly chart. Okay, each candlestick represents a uh, a month. Now. Remember what we said is that, you know, a candlestick, candlesticks tend to be a reversal pattern. So we need something to reverse. Well, you, hopefully you can see it's quite clearly prices was in a particular long uptrend here. Okay. A very long uptrend. But what we saw here, let's just say at the start of this year is this particular candle here. That was a pin bar. Okay. That was a bearish pin bar. Okay. So remember, you know, the kind of the wick, which might might be a bit difficult to see because it's on the uh, on the sort of uh, uh, it's on the the separator okay of uh, each year. But that was original. Remember what we said is that you know you have the uh, the wick is kind of lying okay it might be pointing one direction, but we're expecting price to go the other direction. And actually, what we can do is we can see that that did happen the, the kind of next month. And this was this was March. And let's see if we can. Uh, I might actually not be able to zoom in anymore, but hopefully what you can see is that, you know, what we had here was, you know, we had a huge engulfing candle there, okay? A huge outside candle. Remember the high and the low of the preceding candle, okay? 
was just completely engulfing, okay, the, the range of, you know, not only the one bar, but actually about five or six bars beforehand. And that kind of gave us a hint. We'd had, a, we'd had the rejection candle, okay, at the start of the year, followed by the outside bar, okay, the next. So we were getting a strong indication that price for the next session or so was going to drop, and that's what it did, okay? And that's where it actually dropped, okay? And we can see that down near the 20,000 mark, those of you who started trading, it's kind of the early, uh, at the start of this year. But, you know, the, the, the market was giving us hints, okay? The market was giving us an indication that it, it hadn't, uh, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't ready to keep climbing yet. It was actually going to, to drop. So, as I said, you know, if you're looking at on, on monthly charts, well, invariably, it doesn't happen or occur as often as, uh, as you like, because you're looking at each candlestick being a monthly. But when you do get a reversal pattern on there, it's giving you an indication that actually, you know, this is where the market is likely to go, that you're getting an element of a directional bias. Uh, and if we look at, just to sort of take on a little uh, piece of that, if we look at the, the kind of, this is the NASDAQ here, okay? And here's a, a little bit of a learning point, okay? This is the NASDAQ, again, this is the monthly chart of the NASDAQ here. And, you know, hopefully you can see that prices, you know, price has been in a very nice uptrend, okay? And, you know, we had earlier, we had earlier in this year, we had, what did we have here? This candle here, having, you know, just been on our way up was that we had a uh, what was a rejection candle, which also happened to be an outside uh, bar. And for the next month, okay, you know, we actually drifted down and dropped very, very strongly. But some of those of you sharp eyes might be looking at this candle here now saying, well, you know, Paul, look at that at the moment, okay? We have a high here, okay, and the low is here. You know, that is an outside bar, okay? And what it happened is, is it's actually sort of completely engulfing the preceding bar. Uh, and that's very true. But just here for my uh, beginner traders joining, we have to remember, just just hold your horses. I know some of you might be getting very excited and wanting to start selling the, uh, the, the NASDAQ. But remember, this is a monthly candle, okay? This candle, all right, needs to complete. And it will not complete until the end of the last trading session on the 30th of September of this month. Now, if we come back here in what would be, what, nine days time, and actually found that that candle had completed like that, well, then very much there you have a, you know, a bearish outside bar. And so that's giving you a, a hint, okay, that the directional bias for the next month, for the next session, might actually be to the bearish side, to the downside. Remember, who's, who you're thinking about? Who is in control of the market? But you have to remember, okay, you have to remember that information is not valid until the candle completes. So in this chart, it's a monthly chart, but if you're looking at this and, a, and this was a four hour chart, that information is not valid until that candlestick completes. That's very important to, uh, to understand and know. And uh, I thought we'd also have a little look at uh, just something here. So what we've got here, this is the uh, ASX here, okay? So very not dissimilar to what we saw with the uh, with the other candles, okay, the other uh, charts we've just looked at in that, let's just bring up our drawing tool, is that, you know, price had actually been, for the most part, in an uptrend. And then at the start of this year, what we can see here is we had the candle here, completely engulf the preceding candle. In fact, engulf quite a few of them. And actually what we can see there is that was a big monthly outside bar, okay? The range of it completely engulfed, okay, the, the candlestick before. So what we had was an indication that we're likely to have a directional bias to the downside and, and that we did for the next month. You can see that actually price traded down here, you know, traded all the way low before we actually had, you know, a little bit of a pullback. But, you know, this is what starts to interest me here. Let's just get rid of these tutorials just to finish off. Is that understanding is, you know, what I'm looking at is, you know, price comes back up here. And then what it does is it prints a rejection candle, a monthly rejection candle. Price is pointing up here. Okay. But it's actually, this is an inside bar that is also a rejection candle. The next month is once again, it's pointing up. It's a rejection candle. And, you know, and then I start to, then I'm starting to get interested, okay? We're actually starting to see that having had, you know, having moved from here all the way up to here, we're now producing rejection candles. And this is where I'm looking at this here is also a moving average. And what we also have here is, just close tools, let's just bring this up. What we also have here is 
this is around about the kind of 6,000 level here on ASX. Remember what I just said a few slides back is that, you know, <clears throat> candlesticks are great, but I like to use them as a confluence of indicators. So I can see there that price has rallied up into a big round psychological number and also a, a, a period moving ad period, 50 period moving average and has also started to print, okay, rejection candles. So there's three things happening there that are of interest to me. And what I was able to do is, you know, when I move down to the weekly chart, well, what do you know? When I'm looking at the weekly chart, what I'm seeing is, you know, here we go. What I'm seeing is lots of wicks here, okay? There's lots of rejection candles, lots of wicks pointing up, okay? And this one here, okay? Let's just draw it is not only is it pointing up, okay, is a little bit of a rejection candle, uh, but it is also a, an outside bar as well at the 6,000 area, okay. So there is effectively not a surprise that then what we saw for the next last few weeks is that price, okay, the directional bias has been to the downside. Anyway, unfortunately, we've run out of time, as always, ladies and gentlemen, but I, I hope you found that useful. I hope it gives you just a little bit of an idea of how you can start to utilize candlesticks, okay, just to give you a little bit of insight into how uh, and analyze the market in terms of trying to understand where the next directional bias might be. Uh, as always, I wish you the best of success with your uh, own trading, ladies and gentlemen, and, uh, you know, Please join my uh, colleague Marcus, who will be here on Wednesday. Uh, I'll be in the trader's yard here for the uh, rest of the, the afternoon. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you uh, next Monday at our uh, next session. And until such time, I wish you the best of success with your uh, own trading, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll, uh, we'll speak to you soon. Many thanks.